gonna throw a quick thing out there real quick. I've got a video on YouTube that I made. It's been five, four, three or four years ago. I'm not sure when. Uh, of how to modify dog proofs. Uh, when I made the video, it was made for uh, the Breeder T3s is what I worked on in the video, I believe. And uh, on dupes, which now you have the Diablo. It works the same way. I'm not sure about some of the others, but uh, I've had some people ask me about the video and it is mine. I did make it. It was on an old channel that I started up at one time but never really went real far with. And then I started up the uh, Backwoods Trapper video channel. So uh, I just want to let everybody know that I'm gonna be moving that video from that channel to the Backwoods Trapper channel. Uh, so here it'll be, check it out. Uh, I don't know if it really helped my catch ratio much. I'm sure it did because there's a lot of coons that'll actually pull up on the trap, but at the same time, there's a lot of coons that's gonna push down on it too, depending on what bait you use. So uh, here's the video, hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. It'll let you know when I put new videos up. So here's the video, enjoy. This is how I modify my T3s, Dukes, whatever dog I'm using. Okay, I start out first. Go ahead and get a new one here. Start out first by taking this loose on the T3s. On the Duke, you'll have to actually drill one side of it and either replace it with a bolt <coughs> or tack weld the rod back in to hold your trigger down. What I do first take this loose and I'd say a lot of you are already doing it. Some of you probably haven't done it yet because you're not real sure how to do it or you can order the change out parts and do it that way. I just I do it this way because it saves me money. It takes up a little bit of time but part of it okay now the way this originally comes out your post is straight up you can see how it is here now you've got an inside notch that drops down that goes to your trigger once it's modified it'll be huh, let's see here it will still be It'll actually be upside down. You see here your post is dropping down like this because your dog's resting in there or your trigger is on your dog. After I modify it, it's actually turned this away. So it'll actually raise your trigger up about, I'd say, Probably about a half inch, quarter of an inch, which still ain't really gonna matter a lot. I haven't had a problem with it on coons. I've still had them above the pads, so. I'll put this back over here. First thing I'm gonna do, grab my pliers, turn my trigger the way I'm gonna have it after it's done. Take it. I wanna get it good and straight. Right there like it. And then bend it. Bend it until it's straight with the trigger itself. You can see there how it is. I'll take a grinder and I'll clean this notch up on the side where they originally bent this just so it don't drag on the inside of the groove right here. this down just a little bit 
so I ain't gotta grind so much into my dog or my dog right here. Sorry, man, you guys, the dog on this, but that's the trigger. This is the dog. What I'm gonna do is hold it with a pair of pliers. I'm gonna put this back in. I'm actually gonna get some Loctite and put on these nuts. That way I don't have to worry about them coming back loose. They put, looks like some kind of powder Loctite on them maybe, I'm not sure. I've actually noticed a little bit of better success running them like this with the push or pull style. They're not so much dogless then. But I really don't think a dog's going to be sticking his paw down in one of these. I use mostly sweet baits or fish type baits. Every now and then I'll run cat food with a mixture of corn. But it's only in areas where I know there's no pets there or nothing. <clears throat> one other thing I'm going to do is this is straight. I've noticed on these T3 bridges, even before you modify them, it's still once you set the trap. It's still a little rough to get it right to where it's got to be. So I bend them just a little bit. And what I do there is I line it up with the back of the teeth on this here pair of pliers. I take this set. that much of a bend. Now what we're going to do go ahead and cut our notch. Should wear safety glasses on this too. groove I've cut into it. See it there. You can see right there how it lines up. Now it's a push or pull trigger. There it is from the inside. Now you can push down on it. It sets off. So that's how you make a dog proof into a push or pull system. I like them a lot better that way. After you set them a few times and work the burrs off and stuff, I'll go back and hit the inside with a file. It's got a little bit of burrs to it. Good to go from there.